Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back. Okay, we're playing Alex from the Motherland. AKA Sasha. One of the weirdest name translations between a Ukrainian and English. Alex to Sasha. It never really made sense to me, but it is what it is, I guess. Let's see how we do today. If I lose this game, I drop back down to 800. No big deal. <laughs> I was uh, I was playing uh, really poorly on Friday and actually dipped back into the 800s uh, for one game. Uh, it's a bit embarrassing. Going from like 936 to 899. But what can you do? Not much, I guess. Just keep going. Going for the trade skis, me. That's really early to go after that. Uh, open H file. I don't like the open H file. I kind of prefer going for this Pawnee 5 thing. We'll see if the opponent wants to let us have that. Yeah, he does let us have it. It's a bit risky, I think, having these stacked pawns here on e f on the e file. I kind of go back and forth about knight f three after pawn is on e five, simply because, uh. You won't be able to get the knight out onto like its natural square here. I think he's just trying to block the check here with a6. Goes after the pawn. I think we have to go f3 just to defend that pawn here. I have to be kind of careful of getting forked here. Um, if a pawn were to land on e4 somehow. You know, pawn a6 is a really interesting move against this setup. It prevents b5, which is kind of smart. I think c4 is going to have to get played here. Soonish, probably after we castle. Just get the early castle out of the way here. Okay. Let's develop. Rookie one and then Pawnee fours. Interesting idea. Um, you know, I don't think this light square bishop is gonna be all that useful. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, get rid of that. That might open up the F file for him. But I'm willing to open up his uh king side here. Maybe it's a mistake, maybe it's not. I don't know. But I do have this, uh, no, I don't quite have this. I was thinking like a knight g5, but that's protecting uh, e5. Um, let's see.
don't really know about rookie one anymore. Since it's there's two pawns on the file. Let's just bring the queen out. I'm like 99% sure he's going to go g4 next. So I kind of want to hop the knight back, but then I'll be losing a pawn. I wonder if I go c4 here. Hmm. I think I'm losing this pawn no matter what. I don't know how else I can protect it. Maybe I just go h3 so I can hop my knight back. I think I'm actually just going to go h3 so I can come back to h2. Wants to get the pawn. Kind of almost wouldn't mind pushing h4 here, but I don't think that's good. He has two attackers on that square. It's probably not the best. Um, I'm fully expecting him to take with the knight here, but honestly, in my opinion, getting the rook out there is not as strong as having it on the F file, but that's just my opinion. That's just my two cents. I was hoping he would take, but I'll just go attack his rook. I think he's kind of forced to play f5 here. I doubt he'll go e4. e4 is like really risky, it seems like. Yeah, I was expecting that.
No, this pawn's hanging, so. Hmm. Let's just trade off here. Maybe something like knight d4 next. Yeah, I need to figure out how I can just start trying to find a check a bit faster here. Uh, Pawn e4 would be kind of a nice move. It would be a bit of a trap. I kind of want to try going for Pawn e4. Uh, yeah, Pawn e4. If he takes, obviously, we just take his queen. But then there's rook d4, which really just attack uh, excuse me knight d4 which really only attacks his rook he can always just move it back and then everything else is still protected so um and then i can start looking for the no no i can't start looking for the checks i'm gonna try this e4 obviously it's a trap i don't think he'll fall for it but at the very minimum it's gonna cause his rook to move back i believe I don't think he'll go rook e5. But if he takes with the pawn, it'd be nice. I think something like pawn e4, you could, at least when I was playing, you could kind of get away with it in the 600s and the 700s. But I've noticed in the 900s, you can't really get away with these types of moves. Or not that you can't get away with them, but the opponents don't really fall for them anymore. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. His queen's protecting the very valuable g5. I've been wanting to get my knight out there, but I just need his queen to move. Uh, then again, it's uh, protected by the rook on f5, so I can't quite do that. G3 is really tempting. Well, he's got two defenders on the pawn there. Let's see, he's still up a pawn. Yeah, there's two attackers here. I think he would just take with the rook. I think I need to go rook d4 here just to add extra support to the pawn. Let me think about this. I could come back. With knight d2, but then I that wouldn't be very strong. Or would it? Let me think. Knight e2, he takes. I go knight e4. And then the rook is going to be x-raying the queen. Could always just take the pawn, but he's up a pawn, so I'd rather not. There's always the idea of just pushing the pawn up. It's not like I'm forced to take here or anything. 
pushing up is an idea. I have to do something with this pawn. Either defend it, let's say, with something like the knight. Or just push it up. Yeah, so it's either e5, rook d4, or knight d2 here. I'm just going to go knight d2. I don't know why, but I think that's the best move. I think the second best move would have been to just push the pawn up. Hmm, I could be wrong. I want him to take the pawn so I can recapture with the knight. That's the dream scenario. Then I'm just attacking his queen. I don't think he'll take the pawn. Yeah, I'm actually... I'm surprised he went for it, but... I don't know. I guess knight d2 was okay here. He's forced to move his queen here, so he probably wants to defend g5. Uh, at this point. Maybe like queen e7 is a pretty good move here. Well, no, because then I get check. No, but then he protects d8. Never mind. I think like queen e7 is his best bet, yeah. g3 is an idea. Rookie one is an idea, but I like the idea of g3, but I kind of don't because he has a light square bishop, so I don't want to open up this diagonal here for his like queen to land on g2. We try to trade queens off here on g5 and try to win the pawn. Queen h5 followed by queen g5. He would have rook h4. And then I'd be... Uh, actually, I think that would still be winning. Hmm. I'm just going to go rook e1. I feel like it's the safer move and it gets the uh, rook into a more active square. I could pin the pawn with a queen c4. I don't know what that would really accomplish, but it's an idea. Probably not very good since it's defended by the bishop there on c8. Mm -hmm. Yeah. C6 
he going to be aiming for here? I think he's going to try to target either the rook or the queen next. I think he's going to try to target the queen. I kind of want to go for h5 and try to get this uh, pawn here. I think it's kind of an interesting idea. Yeah, but then g3 is also just like very tempting. I think I'm going to go for this and just try to win this pawn here. I know it's a strange move, but I might regret it. I'm hoping he pushes g6, and then I'll go g5. That'll be the best case scenario. Yeah, if we get that trade-off, the bishop will be attacked on d7 as well. Okay, so we did see that coming. A uh, section, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is good, this is good. The bishop is gonna be forced to move. We'll just pre-move this, no reason not to. Okay, so the bishop's attacked, so he basically has to move it. Yeah, he could attack the knight, but eh. I think I'd rather lose the knight in favor of the bishop here. It's a very open position, so. Saw that coming. Um, I think I can win the pawn here. His bishop is more or less pinned. And this attacks the rook at the same time. Maybe it's a risky move, but hey. Yeah, if he takes the knight, uh, rook d8 comes with check, and then uh, the bishop is won with e6 as well. Rook e6. I don't think he can actually save his bishop here. I mean, that loses a rook, so whatever. Bit of a blunder there. Yeah. GG Alex from Ukraina. Thanks for playing. Appreciate it. Let's do like a five second review. 90.1. That's cool. What was the great move here? The queen move was great. Yeah, that won a pawn. Yeah. I wasn't uh, calculating 96 afterwards. Um, I think 96 was just sort of a luck move. What was I really expecting him to play here? Uh, in this position, I was... Expecting him to just either attack the knight or go play something more forcing, like bishop a4 and just attack the rook. Um, or maybe even come back and just defend the pawn or something, but... Yeah, so what could have been a better move here? I'm curious. I wasn't really crazy about queen h5. What was this? Knight. Why is that the best move? 
That loses a knight. Rook a f8. I mean, let's be realistic. We would have just lost a rook there. Or oh, excuse me, a knight. Okay, so then he loses a bishop. Yeah, okay, so we saw that coming. Huh. Interesting. It would have been a dead even position, but... Giving the knight away like that, I don't know. I did see h4 coming, which was... Good. <laughs> One of the few times I calculate to move, like, more than uh, one move ahead. <laughs> and we did decide that it would be okay. So, yeah. Fun game. Anyways, yeah. GG Alex. Thanks for the game. See you guys in the next one.